That's right, the return to the big nude boat. My first on natural trip on a ship was in 2023 and it was marvelous. And you can see more about that if you like right up here. In fact, it was the trip that turned my attention into cruising in the first place. It was that good. The 2024 cruise by Bare Necessities was spectacular. And it was by far the top of the seven cruises I've had in this last year. First though, unfinished business. I wanna give a shout out to some new friends I found. These are people that reached out to me and recognized me. I was both, both humbled and surprised that, that that happened. So here's to Terry and to Calvin and to Holly and Chris. Thank you guys very much for helping make the trip even more special. Mm. Well, in addition to these fine people, there was a lot of friendly passengers as well as the crew was outstanding on this journey. The ship was a little bit different though because they'd gone in for a refit in Spain in uh, I think August of 23. So they'd, they'd done some changes. Uh, most notably, uh, they had taken the Beauties nightclub and they have shaved off the bottom floor. So there is no more no more two-story club. They put in a dance floor and a bigger bar and, and some more seating up on the top deck. Uh, and then the bottom part, they turned into a more dedicated uh, chef's table experience so they didn't have to do like the temporary type stuff from, from days past. Um, I would say that, that beauties still seem to be a very functional space, uh, but I never saw any dances held there like there was last year. So to me, that was kind of a net loss. Uh, they also added a photography studio, uh, as well as a rebranding of the sports bar into the Veterans Lounge. That, that was nice. That was nice. There was a lot of other cosmetic things through the ship, uh, for the most part, and, and the ship was great. The ship was great, as always. Uh, they didn't give a lot of attention to the staterooms, because I know the one I was in uh, still had a very sticky bathroom door that was really hard to get open. and, and uh, and the refrigerator still didn't get but maybe a few degrees below room temperature. But anyway, still good, still good. It's not a surprise that after a year there was gonna be crew turnover. So I shouldn't have been shocked yet. I was still a little bit sad when I, I missed on, on seeing some of the, uh, the old faces that I got used to seeing. Uh, people like Senorita and, and our room steward, uh, Jerry and, and others, and Frankie, particularly Frankie, the cruise director. He was amazing. And I'm not trying to, to throw any kind of shade on the current cruise director, Jasper, because he did a great job, but there was just something about Frankie. He was a force and, and he was amazing, especially on the scavenger night, right? Yeah. The cruise was only seven days versus the 14 day marathon we had last year. This opened it up to a lot of, of more people at that, that could get away for one week vice two. There was definitely a younger vibe this time around. There also seemed to be a much larger percentage of people taking advantage of the whole nude opportunity because uh, I saw a whole lot less people that were wearing cover-ups and all, at least when the weather permitted. There was a few cold days uh, sailing out of Tampa before we could get down to the Caribbean heat. And like last year, the vast majority of people seemed to be groomed. Down under, mate. There was the same type of opportunities for fun, just like last year, entertainment. Uh, there were games, music, dancing. Uh, and of course, the food was amazing in the main dining room. One of the most pleasant discoveries for me was the ivory bar. If you'd have told me I'd have spent any time at all in a piano bar, I would have thought you were crazy. But with the, the entertainment personality of, of the pianist uh, Russell Blues, and, and the bartenders, it was just a, a, an amazing time every time I went there, so you should probably check that out. Russell had some people join him karaoke style for some music, and of course the entire bar sang when we knew the words to the song, and sometimes when we didn't. There was a large group of us that kept buying Russell shots, and that kept the show very interesting. He called them his boosters. Cheers, more, cheers, more, cheers, more. There were a good number of new dances held on the Lido deck. Uh, a lot of different theme nights that, that kind of uh, just plugged right into that. Glow night was, was heavily attended and people had just pulled out all the stops. There was some amazing costuming going on there. Glows lighting up the night. And speaking of theme nights, there were a lot of them. Uh, between Bear Necessities and Carnival each having their own type thing, there was usually something to be done every night. My favorite was the Pirates and the Mythical Creatures night. You got to dress up in all your pirate regalia and, uh, and dance and have a good time and then join in on the pirate parade and the costume contest. 
Yar! Theme nights are a lot of fun. They're always welcome. You know, you think when you go on a nude cruise that you would be able to just to throw your hat and some sunscreen in a suitcase and you'd be done. I swear, I take more luggage on the nude cruise than anywhere else just because of theme night costumes. The ports of call were Mahogany Bay, Cozumel, and Porta Playa. Uh, I didn't even get off the ship at Porta Playa because I'd been there probably a month before and you know they make you keep your clothes on so I, I passed on that one. Mahogany Bay on the other hand was excellent. They made that a clothing optional destination so we got to go out and enjoy the beach and you could, uh, you could take part in a buffet there if you like at, at an extra cost. And, uh, and, and just enjoy the waves, the beach, the sun, and everything all natural. It was, it was awesome. There were some clothing optional excursions also offered up by Bare Necessities. The one I chose was Passion Island on uh, Cozumel, Isle de Passion. And on the trip there, on the shuttle, you were allowed to, to cast aside your textiles and uh, enjoy the rest of the trip. And of course, the beach area and all that was, was actually clothing optional as well. So you could go out there and get your nude glory on. That place probably deserves a video of its own, but in short, I will say that it provided a very nice nice afternoon of, of some nude enjoyment. Uh, my only critique to it was there seemed to be limited time. You only got about two hours on the beach, uh, which part of that was lunch, uh, before you had to catch your mandatory shuttle back. So I will say it felt a little bit rushed, but other than that, it was a very good trip. The sea days, as always, just pretty much consisted of enjoying the sun, sitting around the pool, enjoying the trivia games and other games inside if you chose, and, and just talking to people and enjoying drinks. The shows were good as expected. Uh, they seemed to be a little bit of a repeat because I remember the beach show from last year, uh, but that doesn't doesn't really diminish it. It was still good. The, uh, the, the, the players were, were very energetic and the singing was nice. So yeah, it was good, good, good place. Uh, there was also comedians on hand. Uh, that kept us entertained uh, and, and a lot of other other events going on the ship as well. There was also a musical duo from France uh, called Just Married and they they were naturists so they actually did their performances in the nude as well. So good at music, so friendly people to talk to. It was just an awesome time. I hope they come back. There was a goodly number of meet and greets. Uh, you had things for singles and solos and LGBTQ and various age groups. So if you didn't find somebody that you could talk to while you were on this cruise, I don't know what to tell you. The opportunities were there. And if you chose to not be in the limelight and kind of stay off, you don't have a little more quiet nude time, there was opportunities for that as well. You could go up on the upper decks, find you a chair in the sun. Uh, you could go to the library or uh, down to the sunset garden for some solitude and, and just enjoy watching the, the, the world go by. The tradition of cruising ducks was maintained with uh, a lot of people hiding them and finding them. I found one of these little cute little koalas from Australia, so thank you guys, appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so, so the, the tradition is alive and well, even on the big dude boat. And the tale wouldn't be complete if I didn't call out the extraordinary job that the Bear Necessity staff did on board. They were there uh, running the craft time, uh, a lot of the entertainment, uh, the, the games and such, and, and just generally providing information and, and a little bit of security to, uh, to, to the passengers. And speaking of security, there was a lot larger security presence on board this time than what I remember from last year. And I don't know if there was a reason for that or if they were just making sure there wouldn't be a reason for that. But security was, was ever present and uh, keeping everybody straight. With that said, there was a couple of incidents that I heard about. Uh, a couple of people had some of their door decorations removed and confiscated because they were a little bit over that risque line. And there was one couple that got kind of, you know, shooed away from the dance floor because they were doing a little, little bit more of a dirtier dance than, than people liked, I guess. So other, other than that, the cruise was very good. Everybody seemed to be well behaved and, and a lot of fun. A lot of fun was had by all. Next year has a lot of changes in store as they are changing from Carnival over to Norwegian Cruise Lines. The slated ship to be the next big nude boat is the Norwegian Pearl, and it promises to be a good time. There's a little bit of controversy in that the next trip is around 11 days, and there are only three sea days in the midst of that entire time. So some people are balking a little bit that they're not gonna to get to spend time nude on the big nude boat. And I, I can see that, I'm sensitive to that. Uh, with that said though, there is a private island that they're going to on the way out and on the way back. Uh, and both those trips are going to allow uh, clothing optional 
venues. So, so there is that to take some of the sting out. But that's a story for next year. I mark this year's trip as a vast success. It was awesome. It was awesome. So check them out at www.cruisebear.com and you can get some more information or have a chance to sign up and see some of the pricing as well. Anyway, you may be asking, will I be going back? Well, the Magic 8 Ball says chances are good.